Las Vegas was the most central area to do all the things that I wanted. And I used a little bit of some of these, you know, canyons and things around Santa Fe. But basically, it was all around Las Vegas. And, in, and Las Vegas had a look of a sort of classic rural Midwestern town, too. The houses had a certain kind of Victorian look to them. There was the prairie on one side, the mountains on the other. It, it, it really seemed like an all-American town. We acted like we were taking over the town. The place is like one of the, the last supreme tourist spots uh, in the country. Everything's just like it was in, in the 1800s. It, they, they've never let the town develop. It stays just, you know, just the same. When the movie announced that they were coming, people were pretty excited about it. Here's a major film coming in. Of course, I don't know if anybody really knew who the stars were. I didn't. But the fact that they were going to be here for, for several weeks, filming and using locals to, to be stand-ins and all, it was, it was pretty exciting. There have been movies that come in and done scenes throughout the years, but this one was a whole production. And the whole town was excited. The whole city, you know, was permeated with the whole excitement of uh, the movie Red Dawn. And so it was, it was pretty exciting, actually. What they did to make the town look like a Midwestern town is, is they put this cowgirl up on one of the, the uh, buildings as you're coming in from the south side and it said, welcome to Calumet. This cowgirl in her hand was um, an extension above the building and she was waving at people as they came in. I remember lots of streets being blocked off, um, lots of explosions happening, seeing buildings that, you know, before, I mean, they were old and falling apart but seeing them afterwards, you know, with the black marks and, and everything. Oh, the people were very happy to have us do that. They just thought that was great. They loved having World War III come to their town. It was very exciting. They moved around town painting blue holes on things, barbed wiring, tanks rolling up and down the street. You know, what's not to be excited about something like that? And they really, even if you weren't in it, made you feel like you were part of this big party that lasted for four months. We took over the town and wrecked it. <laughs> but then invasions can be pretty hard on a town. He just made that town look like it had gone through World War III. And it was just all art direction, just paint, you know. Uh, they'd, they'd take old lumber and make it look like it, was, it had been burned and all that kind of stuff. And you go away one day, you come back a week later, and it's all blown up and burned to a crisp. Las Vegas pretty much became Red Dawn's soundstage. Uh, a lot of Douglas Avenue, Grand Avenue, Railroad Avenue, pretty much all of downtown. They pretty much commandeered the whole town. The building of Lincoln Street, I think, was the most interesting because many of the buildings uh, going down the right-hand side were just single story, and they built fake second story buildings, and just to watch that process. And then if you don't believe it when you see it done, walk around the back because there's nothing there. For the war scenes, they went in and uh, put paint on the buildings to make it look like the buildings had burned in, in downtown area and uh, in the main portion of where they did the shooting. And then on the other side, there were several tall buildings, two stories, with a one story in between, and they filled that in. And it was absolutely incredible. And on the left-hand side, they blew that up for reals. On the right-hand side, they built it blown up. So all the edges were jagged. And that, that was real fun. And in fact, it was kind of sad to see it all blown up because we all liked the way it looked. It was like, leave it, please. What they did to make the town look like a war zone, they put tanks and jeeps. and uh, It was just weird looking. Walking down the street, you, want, you didn't think you were in your same town. <laughs> the Plaza Hotel was pretty much base station for everybody. All the actors stayed there, uh, the director stayed there, and they found out real quick that it's haunted. In the midst of all that, I'm also dealing with a legitimately haunted hotel room where we were staying. I mean, legitimately, and I don't really believe in any of that stuff, but there was. So there was paranormal activity after work and then going, fighting, you know, Cubans and Russians at work. You can hear people walking around in the middle of the night when there's actually nobody in the hallways, hear noises, and they found that out real quick. I finally went to the manager of the hotel 
He said, well, there is a rumor that the original owner of the hotel um, murdered his wife and, and hid her body somewhere in either the, <laughs> one, of the, one of the walls or the floorboard or something, and that, that she does occasionally, you know, roam at night. It was, it was a lot. I was calling home a lot. We are standing on the road to Las Dispensas on the corner up here by the highway is where the gas station was. Pretty interesting the way they did the gas station, make it look real enough to where tourists actually wanted to stop and put gas in there, but of course everything was fake. So, And down off to my right hand side is where the um, truck got shot when they were trying to head to the mountains and the infamous radiator scene. I'll leave it at that. Now get up here and piss in the radiator. Middle school and the paratroopers were the first day of filming. It's burned in my brain. It was November 6th. There used to be a teacher here at Memorial Middle School in the, in the 80s. The paratroopers were coming in uh, from the north. They were dropping in, in this area. They're, the attempt was to get them to land in this field over here. However, because they were unable to land exactly on the field, they were overshooting their drops. So oftentimes they had to redo it several times in order for the landings to be perfect. I, I remember thinking, how in the world are the teachers keeping the kids focused when the, all of this is going on around them? And the, the airplane, I think it was a DC-3, flying over very low to let out the, the paratroopers out. And that was kind of fun. They used all kinds of different things there and people and classrooms and I was like I wish I was going to school there just for that just so I could see everything. I remember them coming in towards the, the school and um, they would land on their bellies over here coming towards the school and then as they came into the school then they did their shooting into the building and I know that they were shooting at the, the teacher and the students in there so it was pretty exciting. Is a whorehouse where the revolutionary ideals of your forefathers are corrupted and sold. This is the Fort Union drive-in, and this was the location of the concentration camp. The screen behind me is where they're showing the propaganda. Well, it was actually kind of interesting seeing all the propaganda on the screen, too. I mean, that was kind of new to us. During the height of all everything that was going on between us and Russia, it was kind of interesting to see everything up on the screen like that. It's kind of spooky. This is also where they blew up the two jets from the Wolverines and they threw the grenade inside. The jets weren't actually supposed to be blown up here. The concentration camp was up in the mountains, which they couldn't get to once it started snowing, so they brought the jets down. It was pretty interesting when they blew them up because they, I think they knocked off either four or five trailers off their foundation, so it was an interesting day the next day after the explosions. They were many and loud, all those explosions, many and loud. And people kept showing up at the production office the next morning with their hand out saying, uh, three of my windows are broken, and they got paid up. But we knew they were coming, and uh, the scenes that they did up and down Grand Avenue, they were burning tires, so that made lots of black smoke. And to the people on the interstate just driving through town, uh, past town, must have been fascinating. Well, you know, nobody seems to be doing anything, and it looks to me like that town's on fire. <laughs> my sister got scared half to death of all the explosions. She thought it was a war. <laughs> my best explosion experience would probably be the helicopter with the RPG that shot standing across the street when they blew those up and getting hit with glass, and that's how real they had it um, and how intense those explosions were. The buildings, of course, were fake and made just for that, but being able to stand that close to it, was that was an experience. While they were filming and setting up their pyrotechnics, there was no damage to any building that I know of. What they destroyed, they built to be destroyed. And it was carefully designed, carefully staged, the way they had safety in mind for their crew and for the cast members. We are on Highway 104, which is about 30 miles east of Las Vegas. And this is where they have the uh, tank scene where they threw the grenades inside of the, actually it was an armored personnel carrier, off of the cliffs up here on the top, and the execution scene off to the left over here. 
The biggest thing that I remember is the execution scene. That was the first time that I had actually seen something that looked that realistic with that much blood flying around. People drop into the ground. That was pretty interesting. I guess what I really um, I think about the movie was that the that the the background was so beautiful. It just really showed the beauty of our area over here and the mountains and so forth. And so I, I think it really promotes this area as it is. It's pristine and beautiful. The location is definitely supposed to be you know, a very strong character in the movie. It comes from watching John Ford films, I suppose. And I, and I, you know, I feel that movies should be about wind and light, and nature is always more present and stronger than human interaction, even. All right, run, everybody get out of here! Actually, the scene of the hand flying out of a tank and getting shot was my hand. Uh, that was my 15 minutes of fame. My scene was just to walk into the bank, and there's soldiers walking past me and other people walking past me. It's a weird feeling. <laughs> it was the most exciting. Since then, films that have come haven't made an impact, not like Red Dawn. It just, it was the first really major movie to come in and use a good portion of Las Vegas. So it was, People were excited. And I even had a friend that um, tried to forge their autograph saying that she met all these guys. <laughs> I'm like, no, that can't be her signature. But it was, it was just very different, very exciting. We were pretty movie naive at the time. We'd had some smaller shots come in. Um, I don't think anybody was really expecting to have the entire town commandeered the way it was, but I think once they really started doing everything and doing the changes and I think a lot of people enjoyed it, I and mean, it's, it's still one of the talked about things in town, and a lot of people had fun with it. And people still talk about it, and we'll find out we're getting a film. Is it as big as Red Dawn? Are they going to be here as long as Red Dawn? It's the measuring stick for everything that's come since. It just seems like we came out of the clouds and became something. Somebody valued Las Vegas for what it is. and. You know, you tell that to enough people and you begin to realize you do live in a special place.